Well, tonight, the living wage nearly 20 bucks an hour. Can New Zealand employers afford it? New Zealand is one of the least corrupt countries in the world, but for how long? And tea plates for tourist drivers, but are they really that bad? I'm Wallace Chapman. And I'm Hayley Holt. And this is Backbenchers Pub Politics as it happens. Do you want to go in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Backbenchers 2016, here we are, a big thank you to Prime TV, we made it, gosh it's the ninth year of the show and what a panel tonight, they've come here, it's recess week, recess, recess week. Peter Dunn even cycled into the show uh, tonight, so uh, what a, also, to, no, we'll talk about that later Chris, um, um, also people come from uh, far and wide, we have uh, a woman called Jules who came from Florida just to see Backbenchers, round of applause for Jules, Wow. And a couple from Hamilton. We'll talk about that later. Oh, there they are. There they are. There they are. All right, let's get on the show. Some big topics tonight, including the living wage. It's a very, very big issue. Uh, let's start with uh, Peter Dunn. A oh, big welcome to MP and Minister Peter Dunn. Thank you, Wallace. Thank you. Good to have you on. <laughs> Good to be back. Thank you. All right. All right, here we go. Question one. Question one. Your car can reach what speed from zero to 60 seconds? <laughs> well, actually, I've never tested it in that regard, um, but it's pretty fast. Pretty fast? <laughs> you know, all right, okay. Uh, what's your favourite walkway in Wellington? Uh, I think probably uh, I like walking around Oriental Bay and the waterfront. All right. And do you accelerate into a bend or decelerate? <laughs> oh, it's not fair, is it? No, it, depend not, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what, what happened with those speeding tickets? Because they're about three years old, two they're years about, old. They're, they're at least three years old, and I outed myself because I thought this was a, a huge nonsense that there was an ombudsman's in inquiry into my speeding tickets, which were two on the same day at 55k to and from a meeting. Paid the fine, forgot about it, didn't even know it had happened until I was reminded of it. Oh, right and, sudden, and suddenly it's the greatest crime of the century. Big crime. Yeah. Are you ashamed? I'm, look, I'm deeply shocked. I've been in counselling ever since. Have you? And I got criticised by people when I said that as not taking the whole thing seriously enough. Okay. I think for most people the whole thing's a joke. And All for right. me it is too. Welcome to the show. Make sure that you've uh, locked up your cycle, Peter. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, a big round of applause for New Zealand First MP, Tracy Martin. <laughs> Tracy, good to have you on. How are you? I'm well. I'm All well. right, very Thank good. Very Question much. one. Do you ever get mansplained? I do. I do a lot. Explain what it is for those of us who don't it's know. It's where I'm, I'm telling what I'm going to do or I'm explaining a policy or whatever and somebody says, uh, 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 uh. what you don't understand is as if because I'm a female, I don't get a whole lot of stuff, right? Whereas I actually, I'm more often right than I'm wrong. So Are you really right? Oh, I see. It. Well, we'll, find, we'll, we'll test that tonight. Do, do, you get, do you get mansplained much in politics? I don't give people half a chance. It's probably <laughs> earlier in my life. I've, I've developed a way of getting around it, but please ask me about my vehicle. Okay, no, okay, what about your vehicle? I have bought an electric vehicle, a Leaf, oh. a second-hand Leaf, about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Haven't been to a petrol station since. Absolutely love it. And the government should incentivise more charging stations towards the does, south does to get over a distance Does anxiety. that deserve an applause or what? Yes, it does. Or, or not? Question two, question two. The Trans-Pacific Partnership legislation has passed its first hurdle. Will New Zealand be better or worse for it? Uh, it'll be worse for it because of the sovereignty rights, because of the Investor States Disputes Clause. OK, and just finally, <laughs> is Jordan from The Bachelor a douche, yes or no? I have no idea. I've never watched it. We'll, we'll never watch it. We'll, know, we'll never watch anything like it. All right. All right. OK. Uh, big round of applause for National MP uh, Chris Bishop. Chris. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks, Wallace. Good to be here. Good nine to years. Amazing, eh? Amazing, is it? I oh, know. I used to come, you know, in the audience nine years ago. Absolutely. Now All right, here we go. Chris, if you were given a can of spray paint and access to a wicked camper van, what message would you spray on it? <laughs> yeah, stop, well, exactly. Yeah, probably something slightly ruder than stop it. But, um, yeah, I, I think they should stop doing what they're doing. I think what they write is, is pretty offensive. And I believe totally in free speech, but... You know, you've got, you've got kids and, and women seeing what's on those camper vans, and it's, it's really, really All right, bad. Question two. Question two. The TPP. Yeah, but the stuff is particularly bad for women. Oh, question true. two. 
The TPP has passed its first hurdle. Will New Zealand be better or worse for it? Oh, undoubtedly better off. Uh, it will be of huge benefit to New Zealand. The countries have been on a... Uh, the parties in this uh, government have been on a unity ticket for free trade for a number of years, and it's a real shame that they're not anymore. Okay, and finally, 10% of South Aucklanders are renting out garages. What does that tell us about New Zealand today? Well, it means we've got to do better, and the government's got a plan to improve housing supply and improve emergency housing and improve social housing as well. We do need to do better. All right, Chris, welcome to the show. And last but not least, we have Annette King. Yeah. 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 Annette King. Good to have you on, Annette. There you go. There's a few people. Oh. Your entourage, yeah? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Number one, the TPP has passed the first hurdle. Will New Zealand be better or worse for it? Well, I think it depends if you want your drugs or not. And I think you're going to find that our drugs in New Zealand are going to be considerably dearer and harder to access. And the other issue no one's looking at is, what does Donald Trump think? And I think you're going to find that the TPP ain't going anywhere. All right, very good. Question two, will you enter the race for Wellington Mayor? Uh, oh my God! Are you still asking that question three years on? No, I'm backing Jace, Justin Lester. All right, I'll go talk to Justin soon. Finally, if you were given a can of spray paint and access to a wicker camper van, what message would you spray on it? Um, ride New Zealand's slippery, slippery slope from number one to number four in the anti-corruption index. <laughs> Very, very good. Very, very good. Hey, uh, Hayley Holt, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Wallace. How, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Now, I was reading something in the uh, gossip pages uh, in the weekend that your grandfather, I think, uh, was going to go up for social credit at the old school party. Is that right? That he is was... correct. <laughs> yes, he was a bit of a social credit uh, purist, and I think he thought his MPs were selling out, let's say, and so he wanted to give Les Hunter a run for his money. Didn't work. Les Hunter. So what happened? Um, well, he didn't get the seat, but he did remain committed to writing a lot of letters. Do you remember, do you remember social credit? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Social yeah. credit, Gary Nat, North Shore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, New Zealand first is the modern day, you know. Credit, so. <laughs> All right, New Zealand first. That's fine by me, I don't mind. <laughs> oh, okay. Hayley. <laughs> yes, well, it's been in some ways an idiotic week, as you will see in this week's top five. Leading the charge, wicked campers have been at it again, slapped with a census ban for the use of a term that a newspaper just couldn't bring itself to say, instead talking around it. In case you were still curious, television wasn't afraid to go there. Bukaki, it's an obscure sexual reference to a subculture of Japanese pornography. It's hugely denigrating and demeaning towards women. FYI, don't Google it. Then there's Eurovision. It's given us ABBA and Celine Dion. Um, thanks? And a whole bunch of other people no one has ever heard of. But as well as being a broadcast of really terrible taste in music, it's a political pissing contest where the outcome could lead to World War III. Speaking of pissing contests, the British Prime Minister called US presidential candidate Donald Trump stupid, divisive and wrong. Um, I beg to differ, David. Number one, I'm not stupid, OK? I can tell you that right now. Uh, just the opposite. But if you're still not convinced of the Donald's intelligence, then dress up little kids like him and let them tell you how smart he is. Let me tell you, I'm a very smart guy. Please don't feel so stupid. My IQ is one of the highest and you know it. And perhaps the only person not acting like a complete moron this week was President Barack Obama instilling some much needed advice to a group of university graduates. In politics and in life, Ignorance is not a virtue. It's not cool to not know what you're talking about. That's not keeping it real or telling it like it is. That's not challenging political correctness. That's just not knowing what you're talking about. Obama. One day I'll drop the microphone and see what it feels like, but uh, just around the panel, because you see uh, Sadiq Khan, is that his name, the, the new yeah. uh, London mayor, as well as David Cameron, mm. they both said that they probably could not work with Donald Trump. Quickly around mm. the panel, could you work with Donald Trump in the, in, in, in the event he becomes uh, president? I don't think anyone could. The guy's a madman, and mm. I think that the fact that you've got people like uh, Cameron and other world leaders saying that tells you something. Normally, people are very diplomatic about yeah, these things. Yeah. To be that blunt indicates the, the, the threat of risk that What about, see. could Winston Peters work with Donald Trump? I don't know, you'd have to ask Winston Peters, but if you're asking me, I think, um, I think it would be really, really difficult. I think it would be really difficult. There's so many things he said. I understand why he's got this backlash in the, in the party that he's got, but 
It's Chris, madness. What about you? Could you work with Donald well, Trump? Unless there's some massive sea change in New Zealand politics in the next, you know, six months, I won't be uh, dealing personally with Donald Trump. But um, look, I, I was, I've just been in the states uh, for a few weeks, um, you know, a few weeks ago, and can I just say there, there is enormous fear actually in the United States about Donald mm, Trump. Mm. Uh, so he is attracting quite a bit of support from a certain segment of the population, but there's a lot of fear about him, what and about, I, think, I think that's legitimate. What about you, Annette? Could, you, could, could your party work with him? Well, I suppose a country like New Zealand works with all sorts of leaders of strange, and strange leaders in strange countries, but I think the question is, can the American people work with Donald well, Trump? Yeah, and that's yeah. the real issue. All right, Will they vote for him or won't they vote let's, for him? Let's go to the American people, like, well, Jules, who's come from Florida. Uh, Hayley. Yes, Jules. I mean, what... Does, does it make you ashamed to be an American to have Donald Trump bringing all this attention? It is embarrassing, and that's why we're applying for political asylum here in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, I love it. Very well, you're good. welcome. We're working on the paperwork now. It's a little tedious, but we'll get it done. <laughs>